In this video, I'm going to explain how this pair of sneakers has shaped me as a person and as an educator. Let's get into it. This sneaker here is one of my favorites in my collection. Not only do I like the brand, the model, and its overall look and fit of this pair, but this sneaker was the result of a collaboration between New Balance and Jeff Staple, designer and entrepreneur, founder and creative director of streetwear brand Staple Pigeon, and design agency Read Art. He is most known for the collaboration he did with Nike on the Nike Pigeon Dunk, released in 2005. The sneaker's limited release combined with its unique design and the hype generated by social media sparked a frenzy among sneakerheads and collectors. There's a footwear frenzy going on in the city right now, a special sneaker. This home video shows the scene outside the Reed Space Store on the Lower East Side yesterday when nearly 100 self-proclaimed sneakerheads got into a shoving match as they waited for the doors to open and the chance to buy one of only 20 pairs of pigeons. Limited edition, of course. It established the campout culture for sneaker releases, where fans would camp out overnight or even for days in front of the stores to secure a pair of highly sought out sneakers. A pair of pigeon dunks have been sold for $38,000 US in the past. I followed his work for a number of years now, try to read and listen to every interview I can get my hands on, just to hear about his creative insights and innovative strategies in his work, design, and in his life. So it was amazing when I actually got to meet Jeff at Singapore's SneakerCon. In this video, I want to share some of the lessons I learned from Jeff Staple that inspired me and shaped me as a person and educator. The most influential message for me is Jeff's ability to communicate his messages through mediums of creative expression. I have tried to do the same with this YouTube channel. For those who have been following my work and my videos, my message has always been student empowerment and a focus on innovation and creativity in education, using approaches and methods like STEM learning, design thinking, and project-based learning. The medium I have used to share this message has been through video. So like how Jeff uses his t-shirts to communicate his messages about New York culture and the people who are gritty and have never-ending energy. And so then I was able to take those feelings that I had and start processing them into the medium, which was graphics on t-shirts. And I started to think that like, if I can start portraying some of these messages onto garments that people would want to rock, versus like a dissertation in a book or like, you know, something like that is very heady and academic and people can't absorb. But I've, if I made it fly and on a t-shirt, people might be able to spread what I was thinking and spread my ideas. Own an animal. So we started to adapt the pigeon as a real icon for what to me represented New York, represented New York hustle, you know, that street mentality of like, just get it by any means necessary. That's what a pigeon does, right? If you look at a pigeon, the way it survives, it's not supposed to survive in a city, but it succeeds in a city, you know? It, it just manages a way to win. I use videos to communicate my education philosophy. Video gives me a wide range of visual and auditory possibilities for storytelling. Conveying my ideas and emotions I want to invoke, using techniques like music, sound, effects, narration, and imagery to engage viewers and effectively convey my message. And posting my videos on YouTube or Instagram helps my message go out to more people. But on a t-shirt, when I'm on a bus or a subway, like mad people get to see my message. And I felt like that was much more influential to do it that way. And that's really all it was. I want as many educators as possible to see my videos to hopefully inspire them to transform their traditional instructional practice. You know that saying like, don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness? I say don't ask for either. Just show what you are worth with what you make. Don't ask for nothing. I don't need anyone's approval. I just show you what I do and you make your judgment based off of that. I don't talk. This advice from Jeff's interview really resonated with me because to bring change or do something innovative requires you to take the initiative. And sometimes you can't ask someone if you can do it because you know the answer is going to be no. Especially if you are new or a beginner or lower in the hierarchy. 
but you have to produce. An example for me was design thinking. Once I learned about this creative problem solving approach, I wanted to apply it into my classroom and help other teachers integrate it into their projects. But I knew that if I asked the instructional coach or the curriculum person, I would have probably been told no because I'm a new teacher and they probably never even heard of design thinking before. And this was back in the early 2010s. Instead, I asked a first grade teacher to collaborate with me and integrate design thinking into a science unit. I then communicated the student learning through a video and it quickly spread through the parent community. Eventually, parents asked other teachers why their child wasn't using design thinking. I didn't have to get anyone's approval. I was just judged by what I created. What I really tried to do is making the work about the process of the work. As an educator, I found that I was never focusing on an end goal in my career. Instead, I constantly focused on designing, engaging, authentic learning experiences for students. I was not thinking about wanting to move up in a school as an admin or wanting to write a book or wanting to do a keynote at a conference. That was never the focus. And if it was, I don't think I would have done some of these things. Jeff explained in an interview that putting benchmarks in front of himself all the time could lead to major disappointments. When I said left, right, left, right, because if you're just concerned with the present every day, you multiply that together and you will have longevity, you'll have sustainability, you'll have a legacy, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But if you're like, in 25 years, I better be doing this, or in two years or five years, you better be doing this. You're not always gonna hit your goals, and that's mm -hmm. kind of demoralizing. You know, I've gone through a lot of experiences in my life where I realized that tomorrow is not promised, and so like, I just wanna live each day to the fullest. When we focus solely on the outcome, we may miss important opportunities for growth, learning, and self-discovery along the way. This approach of focusing on the process applies to student learning as well, the learning process where learners can develop a growth mindset, embrace challenges, and learn from their mistakes, emphasizing the importance of metacognition, self-reflection, and self-regulation. This can lead to students to become more effective learners and better equipped to navigate the complexities of life and ultimately feel motivated to learn. I was in you know, Las Vegas, Mexico City, Paris, Toronto, LA, uh, Hong Kong and then I come back and I design a line there's no way that what you experience could not come out basically taking like the biggest survey that's ever been taken but for myself you know but I'm absorbing it and I believe that whenever I create something it gets put back out this resonates with me as an educator. Obviously, I don't have the same opportunities and means to travel the world like Jeff to get inspiration, but I do get a lot of inspiration from outside of education to develop meaningful, authentic learning experiences. I use not only my own life experience, but I am constantly looking to the real world and seeing how the knowledge and skills that our students are learning are being applied in real professions, real projects, and real ways that help the world. So I'm constantly absorbing stories, news examples from the internet, and using them as inspiration for the units I create. Like how second graders were museum curators and exhibit designers, or business owners for social studies, third grade playground designers, fourth graders as biomimicry engineers, or fifth grade product development chemists. So those are the lessons I learned from Jeff Staple. Shout out to Jeff Staple for being an inspiration to so many people for the influence he's had on sneaker and streetwear culture, but also showing young Asian kids that we can be influential and respected in different industries. I couldn't believe he was on the floor chatting with people and signing things. And that's the reason why I didn't take these to the sneaker con to get them signed. It was cool to see someone so well known, so influential, be so down to earth and authentic. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment if any of the things I talked about resonated with you. Until next time, stay perpetually in beta and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.